Hi, uh, Shamai, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at drop gangs and dead drops. Uh, first, it's probably worth mentioning where drop gangs came from and um, uh, dead drops and, and why, why they emerged. Uh, they, they really emerged because of some of the shortcomings in the, the dark market solutions and consumers being able to buy illicit goods. Um, the dark markets um, were susceptible to fraud, not fraud generally by consumers because there was a, you know, a rating system between consumers and merchant, but uh, from the actual market itself closing down and, and running off with all the money. Um, they also had issues obviously with, with law enforcement, with authorities taking, taking the markets down. So uh, a, a multi-layered approach has kind of organically grown out of uh, that community um, to try and root around those problems. Uh, and it's using sort of pre-existing accessible technology such as Telegram. Um, so there'll be sort of a message group which people can join and then they can inquire about prices. Some of those price inquiries also can be done by things like bots, which we also looked at in the last video. Um, which means there's, you know, there's, there's some uh, gap between the, uh, the, the, the merchant and the consumer until it's, until it's really necessary. They can remove that human contact. The technical stuff we're going to look at today is actually programming one of these ones, uh, one of these ESP32s up um, into uh, uh, a little IoT device for facilitating a drop gang. As I said in the last video, um, uh, users being able to take autonomy and control over their um, Internet of Things devices is, is quite important uh, and for us to have a free and open source approach to IoT as we do with, with something like Bitcoin, particularly if these little things are going to be transferring value from you know, um, application to application. So, uh, so yeah, so if um, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly run through and we'll make some code up and then um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, how does uh, this little device um, help with the, the, the drop zone issue? Well, you've got um, the purchaser and you've got a merchant. And the purchaser wants to buy something from the merchant. They can't use uh, a trusted third party so how do they do it? Well, the, the merchant goes to um, a public space or private space even maybe if they want to. Um, uh, let's, call it, let's say it's a cafe. And he drops off this little device here. And this little device is just waking up every 10 seconds or every minute or every two minutes and listening to see if there's a hotspot with a certain name. Okay, if there isn't, it just goes back to sleep and does the same thing. So we can do that for, on the right battery, you could do it for months, years, but on a small battery, you could do it for a few weeks. Um, the merchant, uh, the purchaser, sends, I don't know, Monero to the merchant. In exchange for which, the merchant, um, who's incentivized through uh, reputation, I suppose, um, on, on his WhatsApp group or his Telegram group, he sends back uh, some information. He sends back the name of the hotspot, okay, which we'll call hotspot. He sends back um, the name of the network the purchaser will need to connect to after he set up the hotspot, we'll call that wash cakes. And then the password for it. Okay, there we are. So the purchaser then goes to the cafe with his phone. He turns his phone on. He sets up a hotspot called um, uh, called hotspot say could be called anything this little device sees that there's a hotspot called hotspot or called whatever um, and then it runs uh, an access point uh, script which sets up an access point called Welsh cakes with the password which the merchant told the purchaser when the purchaser connects that access point he then gets access to a web page and on that web page which is actually being ran on a little server on here. On that web page, there's the information as to where the merchant has put the, the goods, which maybe could be in a, a plant pot outside here. So what that does is it allows the merchant to be really far away from the, um, uh, the, 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 the actual sale of the good when the sale goes through. It also means that he can, he can stash the good, you know, days or maybe even weeks in advance. Um, it means that the uh, uh, there's less of a paper trail because this little time device here, is, you know, if um, uh, you know, no, no fingerprints are left on, it's incredibly hard to to figure out where that where that code would have come from. Um, 
uh, it's, so he hasn't got the, the paper trail which he would have on his, on his phone, say, so if, if his phone were to be seized. Um, in all likelihood, no one will actually find this device because it'd be well hidden. Uh, but if they do find the device, it's not the end of the world. Um, one device could actually serve multiple um, uh, uh, drop zones. So lots of people could be going to this cafe, connecting to here, and then getting information. This could be serving different information to different people on different places where they could pick up their their product. So, uh, I mean, that, that's not something which we're going to be developing, but that's something which would be pretty easy to develop. Um, and it's all, again, a low-powered device for, like, you know, four pounds, whatever that is, five pounds. Um, so that's pretty much how this little device would work. Um, uh, we're going to go in now and we're going to have a look at the code. So yeah, so we've got a couple of inbuilt uh, libraries here. We've got the Wi-Fi library, which we've already used. We've got a, a Wi-Fi client library, which we have to use. And we've got a web server library because we, um, we're going to be running a little web server on the SP32, which is pretty cool. Um, this is the, the, the page, once someone actually connects the SP32, um, this is the, the, the page it will deliver um, at, the, uh, at the IP address, okay? Um, so uh, here's the, the server starting up, um, and we also just set a, an integer counter as well at zero. Um, uh, and then this just sets uh, What's going to happen when someone connects to our server? It's going to send them to, to, to that to that URL, isn't it? It's going to send them to um, uh, to the main page there. Okay. Um, right. So in the the setup function, uh, we start a serial monitor, um, and then the first thing the ESP does is it scans for networks. Okay. Um, and it looks at that counter and it says, "Well, counter equals zero. Do this." Right. So what does it do? It says. For, um, uh, for, so it scans for networks, it counts the number of networks there are. So say there's seven different possible Wi-Fi networks. It then asks each one of those Wi-Fi networks, is this Wi-Fi network called Costa Costa Wi-Fi? No, it loops back around again. Is this one called Costa Costa Wi-Fi? Well, and then it runs through all seven of those available Wi-Fi networks. When it does find one, eventually called uh, Costa Costa Wi-Fi, it, um, it fires up uh, the access point. Um, with the credentials we, we've, we've put in. So we, we have an access point called Welsh Cakes. Uh, the password is Drop Hound Gang, which you, the merchant would give to the, um, the purchaser. Uh, you have to put a small delay in there before you set the, the static IP address. Um, and then it's, it, it, this, you just start the server up. Um, and then it, the counter has an extra one added into, onto it. So remember at this point, the counter is still zero. So we've been stuck in this while loop um, waiting for uh, somebody to connect with um, uh, with this, these Wi-Fi credentials, okay? Um, but now it's counter equals one. So, oh, in fact, sorry, but while counter still equals zero, um, it'll, it'll, it'll run through this for loop. And once it's checked all the possible Wi-Fi uh, networks it could connect to, um, it will uh, it will go to sleep for 10 seconds and then wake up and then do the same process again. If um, it does find that network and then we get the plus one added onto counter, then this won't run because obviously it's no longer zero and it'll just go next to the next stage here. So in the next stage, we've got um, uh, some uh, a function here to handle the actual request from the client. So when the client is listening, and when the client connects to the, the IP address, um, it can then deliver the content, can deliver the, the HTML. Um, uh, and each time it loops around, it's, again, it's adding one onto the counter. Um, so eventually, after 120 uh, 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 m m m microseconds, not microseconds, milliseconds, as, yeah, milliseconds. Um, after 120 milliseconds, so after two minutes, 120,000 milliseconds, sorry, two, that's two minutes, um, it will just go back to sleep again. So once the, the client has connected to the access point, um, has accessed the web page, uh, and that's been handled by this, and we've delivered this web content to them with the instructions on where the Welsh cakes are gonna be, yeah. Um, then uh, after two minutes, then it turns off, um, uh, and then just starts running this loop again. It's just where are we? Where's the loop? Yeah, that is the loop, isn't it? This loop here, where it's just um, 
checking to see whether someone's come in with, with that uh, uh, Wi-Fi hotspot on their phone. Um, so we'll upload it and then uh, we'll test to see it, see it running, shall we? Um, right, so if I position the camera here, like so. So if I click on upload, right, with the um, uh, some are, some are ESP32s, such as the one I've got, um, you need to actually hit the reset button on the uh, ESP32 in order for it to actually upload the program, which I'll show you now. So that's uh, this little tiny little button here. So if I just hold that down for a second, Oh no, it's the one on this side. There we go. <laughs> um, then it will be able to actually upload the uh, the program as we can see here. There we are. So it went to sleep for 10 seconds, that's right. And then after 10 seconds it should wake up, run our little, um, our little script, and then go back to sleep. There we are. So it woke up, ran our little script, and then went back to sleep. So it's going to keep doing that forever. Um, until uh, until there's a Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, so if I bring my phone out here so you can see my phone. It's completely not a mess. Okay. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah. So try not to dox myself here. Okay, so tethering portable hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspot. Right, so I'm going to set up a hotspot called, if you can see that, Costa Costa Wi-Fi, okay, um, I wonder if I can put that there, grab that there, bring that down there, oh, bear with me, I'm just trying to get it so we can actually see, there we are, <laughs> nice. Right, I'll stick that there. Right, so once I turn the hotspot on, we should see in here, there we go, see? Um, so the, the HTTP server started. So now all the client needs to do is turn off the hotspot, okay? Go back to their mobile network sorry, not mobile network, their um, Wi-Fi network, and they're connecting to, aha, they're connecting to the Wi-Fi network Walsh Cakes. What are you connected to, so I forget that. And the password, which they were given, was drop um, hound gang, and click on connect. Okay, now we're connected. Now we go to the um, uh, the browser. And what is it? 192.168.1.1. Hit enter. Boom. And if you can see that, the Welsh cakes are in the second plant pot to the right as you walk. Uh, uh, in the entrance area, as you walk out the entrance, fantastic. Which is exactly um, what we uh, told it to do, which is fantastic. Um, so if I scale this up now, after two minutes, which is quite a long time to wait, after two minutes, this should um, just go back to sleep again. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the SP32 will go back to sleep again and then it will just wait for the next person to come along with uh, this, where are we, with this uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. So this is a way in which for the merchant to have um, a, a larger air gap between them and the, the purchaser. So they could go and implant this SP32 device uh, like a few days before and it just sits quietly hidden away stuck under a table or something or I don't know hidden somewhere um, uh, listening for that Wi-Fi hotspot the merchant then can drop off the Welsh cakes in the plant pot anytime he wants and then when the purchaser comes along 
Um, he tells them to go into the cafe, to set up the hotspot. That then gives them the information they need to be able to go out to the plant pot and get the Welsh cakes. Um, we can see here now that, the, 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 the it, again, it's looping around. Uh, it's, it's every 10 seconds it wakes up and checks to see if there's any, any Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, what's pretty cool about the ESP32, I don't know if I've got any over here. I should have a little LiPo battery. There we go. Um, let's turn the little camera on over here. There we go. So if we take our ESP32 now, yeah, um, and if we disconnect it from the power, because that's all that was doing, and then uh, if we connect the VIN, so the VIN takes up to five volts. Uh, this is a tiny little LiPo battery, yeah? and it's how many milliamp hours? 500 milliamp hours. Now remember when this is asleep, this is running at 0 0.04, so this should run for, for a good few days. Um, plug that in, see if it's got charge, there we are, that lights up. So that could be hidden, look at that, how neat is that? That could be hidden somewhere in the location, um, uh, 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 and then it's just waiting and listening uh, and running that script. Obviously, we'll be able to see it running that script in the serial models, but what we could do is let's have a look here now. Um, what am I doing? I'm all of a tangle. Right, I'm setting up a hotspot, aren't I? Right, so what we could do is go to, so if I click on wireless networks now, and then I look for wireless networks, I can't see Welsh cakes in there anywhere, okay? Um, if I go to the tethering portable hotspot and I set up my hotspot with the predefined name we agreed upon with the merchant, zoom in, there we are, cost to cost of Wi-Fi, and I click on uh, set up hotspot, set up the hotspot, there we are, and then we wait uh, you know, a few seconds, turn that off, go back to the Wi-Fi. Ha ha, there's Welsh Cakes. Welsh Cakes is back. Click on Welsh Cakes, connect, go to the browser, 192, god damn it, 168 dot. One, one, and there we go. There's the instructions in the browser. You see that? It's pretty sweet. And that's running off this tiny little thing, which will run for um, days on that tiny little battery because it's going using the deep sleep uh, mode. Um, so in this tutorial, we learned roughly well, how drop gangs are used um, uh, and drop zones. Uh, I, I think I keep calling them dead gangs or dead zones or something, but yeah, drop zones and drop gangs um, and how a little tiny ESP32 device like, you know, five quid um, uh, or, or less if you buy an AliExpress, like four dollars if you buy an AliExpress, how one of these can be listening uh, for that Wi-Fi hotspot of a, um, a, a, a purchaser and the, the merchant can stash this somewhere days in advance and then stash their product somewhere else and this will tell them where the, 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 the purchaser, where the product is. Um, uh, and it means that as a system for people buying and selling illicit goods, they don't have to put um, rely on the goods being sent to their home address or to a PO box address which uh, can be linked to them. There's there's more there's less um, accountability there, which is which is uh, is good for them. Um, but I like it because it, it works towards trying to solve that that old problem we looked at before. If you have somebody selling something and somebody wanting to buy it, um, but they they can't do that interaction with trust. As soon as they do that interaction with trust, they tr the 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 interaction will eventually break down. You know, whether it's through dark markets, whether it's through uh, buying and selling, or just using their bank accounts, whether it's a meeting in person or having an escrow or somebody they give the cash and the, 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 the product to. Um, so this goes towards solving that problem. It doesn't solve it, but it works towards solving that prisoner dilemma problem, um, which is uh, becoming an age old mathematical problem, um, which, which Bitcoin kind of exists to try and, to try and solve. Um, 
And the, the societal uh, repercussions of that problem being solved are probably quite large. I don't know what they are, but they're probably quite large. Anyway, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you next time.